All right, guys, like I mentioned, my name is Kimu Vusielo. I am a public relations manager here at Huawei. Um, so this wonderful innovation center falls neatly into my portfolio. As we walk, um, yeah, so this is the Huawei Innovation Center. Um, we do a number of things here. One, it's a showcase of all our solutions in respective business groups. Um, and then it also, we have an open lab on the second floor. We have four business groups here. This is the first, our consumer business group. So consumer business group is all the fancy devices. This is the stuff that everybody knows, that you see on the billboards, the phones, laptops, tablets, wearable devices. Now, at our cloud business group, um, our philosophy when it comes to cloud is everything as a service. The cloud for us really is the foundation on which all future innovations are going to be built. Cloud allows you to provide infrastructure as a service, AI as a service, um, education as a service, whatever you want, as long as it's hosted on the cloud, the possibilities are infinite. So, Huawei Cloud um, is still quite new um, in comparison to the stakeholder cloud players like your Azure, your, your Google. But we are doing incredibly well. So at the moment we have um, Huawei Cloud available in 29 regions across the world. Um, and we have 78 availability zones. So availability zones simply refer to where you can access cloud services from. So where I want to bring your attention is of course here, Johannesburg. So Huawei was the first um, cloud provider to roll out a hyperscaler data center here on the African continent. And it was here in Johannesburg. We have now rolled out three availability zones. Now, this serves multiple functions, two very important ones. The first thing it does for you is reduce your latency. When it comes to cloud, latency is really important. You want that instant access to your information. So having that point of presence here really helps our clients achieve that. The second thing that it does, and this is important, especially in my space, in terms of government affairs, is digital sovereignty. So especially when it comes to government, when it comes to banks, they want to be safe and secure in the knowledge that their data resides in the country. You don't want your data to have to leave the country to be processed and then come back in. It causes all sorts of problems, um, yeah, as you can imagine. So Huawei has really invested in building our cloud infrastructure here in South Africa, and I think we are beginning to reap the rewards. So at the moment, this also serves as a sort of hub for the rest of the continent, but the idea is to build more availability zones throughout the continent. Um, okay, this is just a detailed look at the architecture of the cloud setup. I was the number of vertical solutions that cloud is able to provide for and how that's broken down in respect of private cloud and public cloud. So just at a quick glance, the difference between private and public cloud, if you would like a private cloud, what that means is as Huawei, we come in and we build the infrastructure for you, but once that build is done, we hand that over to you, that is now your cloud. You run it, you manage it. All it's done is it's hosted on Huawei infrastructure. And how's the uptake in the local market? Um, I think generally, not even just from a Huawei perspective, but I think generally the uptake on cloud is pretty slow. In, in um, and I don't know if that's just a, a penetration issue. Um, you know, a lot of our government offices still run manually. Everything is paper-based. So in general, I think the uptake of cloud is quite slow, but we are doing some really interesting projects in the cloud side. I think that I think it'll turn, it'll turn soon. I think COVID was a big uh, shock and showed just how many of our systems need to be automated. So we've got some really, really great things happening on the cloud side. I think I can mention that, um, so SAP, a lot of government departments use SAP HANA for their ERPs. Um, the Department of Labor has chosen Huawei to host their SAP HANA application, which is big. Firstly, because SAP HANA doesn't just give anyone the authorization to host that application. It's really complex. Um, and so they trusted us with that, and the Department of Labor also trusted us to host that application. And the nice thing about that cloud is you don't have to migrate everything onto public cloud. So of course, there's a lot that the Department of Labor is not going to put on their public cloud. But for this, they are running that successfully on public cloud.
And when did that happen? Or how long has it been? Uh, I think it was officially implemented last year. They ran a, a proof of concept for about a year, I think. And I think it was officially implemented last year. All right. This is Enterprise Business Group, affectionately known as EBG. <laughs> we do love our acronyms here. Um, Enterprise Business Group is focused on specific vertical industry solutions. So one of your verticals will be government, another one will be finance, and they will provide specific solutions for those industries. Okay. So this is also just provides us with a good opportunity to give you a snapshot of who we are as a company. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know this information, but we have at the moment about 180,000 employees in over 170 countries and regions across the world. Um, more impressive than just having 180,000 employees is that approximately 54% of those employees work in research and development. So everything that you see here, all the successes that Huawei has in our field, is almost precisely because of our investment in R&D. Um, a quick overview of, of the data sets, I guess. So I want you to think of two things as we go along here. One is data, and the other is connectivity. Well, what's the status of uh, these chips? Uh, I know there was an issue around uh, Huawei. Uh, getting chips from American companies so yes. started moving on in their own direction. Yes. What's Correct. happening there? So everything you see here uh, on this screen is manufactured by us. And we have simply been forced into that position because of the circumstances you mentioned. But what it has done is really move us across in that supply chain because while the rest of the world is desperately running around because of the chip shortage, we are not. So, 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 so the chip... Um, Manufacturing side is it a new business or it falls under the existing business units? No, it's a new business. It's a new business. Stay back. But not, not a new business group, just a new business. Okay. Still falls under the enterprise business group. Okay, but this is a real life case of the power of efficient connectivity. We are now in the era of cloud, but when we speak about cloud, we're not really speaking about hosting your data, but we also speak about the cloudification of networks. How do you automate the network? Um, Configuring a network is an incredibly complex and time-consuming exercise. Uh, it usually takes weeks, months, but with um, SD-WAN, you're able to automate so many of those processes, giving full visibility on your network. So troubleshooting on this network goes from hours to minutes. And you can imagine for something like FNB, that's a huge save in operational expenditure. So we've been able to reduce the TCO by 30%. Um, they are 5G ready now, which also meets future bandwidth capabilities. Like I mentioned, troubleshooting has gone from hours to minutes, and their service configuration, which I spoke about earlier, has been improved by 85%. Um, this is one of our great solutions from a networking perspective that we rolled out across all the F&B branches in the, uh, in the country. The Huawei ICT Academy. So the Huawei ICT Academy is a partnership between us and the universities and TIVIC colleges in the country. At the moment, I think there are 60 certified Huawei partners. I could be wrong, but I think that, oh, 66, there we go. 66 certified Huawei um, ICT Academy partners. Now, how this program works briefly, we would go out and train the trainer. So the university would put forward lecturers, um, we would train them, on a particular solution. So whether that is uh, routing and switching, or whether it's cloud computing, or whether it's AI, we train them on that particular technology. Once they have passed that and we're confident that they understand it at a requisite level, they can then administer a class for that particular technology. That class would be supplementary on top of the curriculum of the students. So while they're studying their computer science or engineering, they can also take these additional classes. So that when they graduate, they not only leave with a university degree, but they also leave with what we call Huawei certification. So we have our HCIA, HCIP, and HCIE. That's just associate, professional, and expert. So it's professional accreditation and the students that finish the courses, um, we then work with our partners to, to sort of um, find jobs, we'll hold a, hold a job fair or a, uh, well, most of the job fair, yeah. but we have one that you of June. So all these trucks are built with sensors. Um, there's a particular distance that you have to maintain at all times. So you're working in this truck, you want to finish your shift 
your shift only ends once you've done a certain amount. So you're going to break that protocol consistently. They're saying they had a, a lot of problems of drivers just ignoring the warning vehicle, the warning signs. Now, with 5G communication, they're able to, as soon as the, the truck goes past that distance, it sends an alarm. If the truck goes again, it just automatically, automatically switches off the vehicle and sends an alarm to the control center to say this particular vehicle at this particular location has, has, yeah, has a problem and you need to look at it. So we do a number of things in digital power. The first is smart PV. So smart PV is the entire system around your solar solution. So we do not provide panels, but everything underneath that panel is done by Huawei. So how the smart PV system works, you have your solar panels up on the roof, attracting energy from the sun. Now that energy comes in in DC form, it needs to then be changed into AC. That's where your inverter comes into play. So Huawei produces inverters. In fact, over the last six years, we have the number one market share globally for, in, for solar inverters. Now, after we have inverted that into AC, um, you either use it, so it goes directly into usage, or if you do have power from ESCOM at that time, you want to store that power for later use, and that's where your batteries come into play. And we also provide batteries. And now this is, these solutions we provide for residential, commercial, and industrial scale. Okay? Okay, so now let's have a look and see what these things actually look like. So let's start here, because it's right next to us, the side tower. So next to each tower, you'll see one of these. Traditionally, it used to be a big cabinet room that looks like a data center. Um, but we've now been able to reduce it to this. And these are all your power, this is your power supply for the site. Mm -hmm. And then, so this would go next to something like this. This is the big brother, this is the smaller one. Um, yeah, and these are powering your site. Again, Ideally, they have solar panels, get all that energy from the sun, and when we don't have that, when this runs out, you can go over to this. This is the camera. Um, the sites. Protection. Uh, yeah. Security. At a very, 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 very basic level. Okay, that's site power. And then we have M power that we spoke about. So, again, everything underneath this building we provide. Uh, the engine, the onboarding, the charging system, uh, the cloud that, that manages all of that and also provide. And then this, of course, the actual charging module we provide as well. 